My husband and I will be married 30 years this year and we built this home probably 25 years ago. We've actually lived in Edgar for our entire lives. So in early 2015, I started to um, experience some bloating, uh, some weight gain, and um, noticed that um, when I would try to eat, I would get full really fast. I also noticed that um, I started to have some abdominal pain, but deep down I felt like there was more going on. And at the end of August of 2015, I was at work and I doubled over in, in pain. I kind of waited and after about three days, I realized it wasn't going away. And so I drove myself to the emergency room and I'd asked if they would uh, conduct a CT scan. So they proceeded to tell me that they found a mass. Um, it was about eight centimeters by six centimeters. And um, they told me it was cancer. And um, I was told that it was stage 3C clear cell carcinoma ovarian cancer. Lisa had a clear cell carcinoma. Usually a clear cell carcinoma is an ovarian cancer, but it can also start in any of the gynecologic organs or within the lining of the abdominal cavity. I remember when I met with my oncologist the first time, he had said, are there any things that I need to know uh, before we, we proceed? And I said, uh, my son is getting married in eight months. I don't care how hard I have to get hit with chemo or whatever treatments, um, I need to be at that wedding. When I met with my oncologist, I said, am I going to die? I was scared. And he said, not if I can help it, and proceeded to uh, get me approved through my insurance company for a targeted therapy drug called Avastin. And that seemed to make all the difference in the world because three months later, I was, um, I had had my scan done again. And my tumor marker had come down substantially and my, my tumor actually shrunk by 40%. On February 12th, I was working with my husband at a fish fry for our, our local church and received a call from my sister-in-law that I needed to get to the hospital uh, right away. My dad had been taken by um, ambulance to the hospital. My dad passed away that night very unexpectedly. Um, it felt like a, just a horrible joke, <laughs> a nightmare, because I was having surgery four days later and my dad had passed away and I did not know what to do. I felt very lost. Um, it was probably the first time I felt like just giving up. Two days later, I was unsure if I was gonna proceed with the surgery um, because we had to plan my dad's funeral. and. The uh, funeral director actually was the one that said, we are not having your dad's funeral until after you have your surgery. It's that important for you to have that surgery. Your dad's not going anywhere and we'll take good care of him. So I proceeded to have the surgery. Watching the way we've come together, watching the way someone fights for something that they want so bad, it's just amazing to see what a person can do when they have something to strive for. It was just amazing, you know, crazy amazing. It was just a plethora of emotions, you know, good, but it was a great feeling. So I was excited, I was on track. I hit that one year milestone, no recurrence in, in a year. Um, however, I was still waiting for my scan results to come through. And that evening, I received a call from my oncologist and I knew if he was calling me, it was probably not good news and it wasn't. Um, my cancer was back. It was more aggressive. It, I was devastated. Um, it, was, it was like a kick in the stomach. I wanted to be more aggressive and I thought there had to be more treatments, some other options out there for me. When I found out I had cancer the second time, I was told that um, I was going to be a grandma. Another motivating part of my journey was to um, be here for my grandson. So I took that weekend and I did a lot of research, found a couple of clinical trials that I, I wanted to talk to my oncologist about, but I also found a procedure called the Hypic. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, where do I have to travel to go have this done? And I was amazed to find out right here at Marshall Clinic Health System, we have a doctor, Dr. Jessica Wormberg, that actually performs that procedure. I was ex very excited because that's 
35 minutes from my home and I wouldn't have to travel very far. The HIPEC procedure is paired with something called cytoreductive surgery where the surgeons remove any obvious tumor in the abdomen and once we remove everything that we can see or feel in the abdomen, we actually bathe the rest of the organs with hot chemotherapy to try to treat any cancer cells that we can't see or feel. And there are three surgical oncologists at Marshville Clinic Health System who provide this service for patients um, who meet very specific indications. I'm a fighter and I had cancer, but I did not want cancer to have me. So everything I did in my fight in the last three and a half years has been with with the understanding that if there's anything I can do to beat this, I'm going to do it. Right now, I'm considered no evidence of disease. I just had um, a scan and blood work done. No evidence of disease, and my tumor marker is at a 3.9, which is pretty amazing. Lisa's a, a great human being. She is proactive in her own health care. She's had a couple of different battles personally with cancer and has had an amazing attitude through this entire journey of hers. What I'm most proud of is the fact that I made it through. I had seen people go through cancer before I had cancer and thought, man, how do they do it? I don't know that I could do that. And now that I've been through what I've been through in the last three and a half years, attitude is everything and not letting cancer rule your life. What I'm most proud of is that I still get up and I get another day. I get another chance at being the best person that I can be, another chance at trying to help people. So that's what I would have to say that I've gotten through all of this.